When a papal conclave occurs, we always look for the white smoke that indicates that a new pope has been chosen by the College of Cardinals. It's often the case that the cardinals had to go through a prolonged process of voting on multiple ballots before one particular candidate reaches enough votes. Sometimes, a candidate that started off with the most votes on the first ballot does not go on to become pope by the time the last ballot is held. Let's take a look at some of the cardinals who were almost pope over the course of the last few conclaves. The last papal conclave occurred in 2013 after Pope Benedict XVI stepped down from the papacy, citing health and age concerns. There was significant media speculation going into the conclave, and there were quite a few cardinals who were considered papal. After the first vote, it was clear that the front-runner was Angelo Scola, who was the Archbishop of Milan at the time and former Patriarch of Venice. Scola holds two doctorates, one in Christian philosophy and the other in theology. Scola is the author of numerous theological and pedagogical works on topics such as biomedical ethics, theological anthropology, human sexuality, and marriage, and the family. He was considered such a strong contender for the papacy that the Italian Bishops' Conference mistakenly announced his election during the conclave. Another strong contender after the first ballot was Marc Ouellet, the Archbishop of Quebec. Ouellet grew up in Quebec, Canada, in the tiny town of La Motte. He was the third of eight children. An avid hockey player as a teen, he decided to pursue the priesthood after breaking his leg in an outdoor ice rink at age 17. He served as a priest in both Canada and Colombia. His first-hand experience in Colombia later proved invaluable when in 2010, he was appointed president of the Vatican's Pontifical Commission for Latin America. Throughout his ecclesiastical career, the Cardinal has known four popes and worked closely with three. The candidate with the third most votes was Jorge Mario Bergoglio, the Archbishop of Buenos Aires, who was considered a long shot due to his advanced age of 76. After no clear winner in the first few ballots, it was Marc Uele who threw his support behind Jorge Mario Bergoglio. In an effort to show a united front, the Cardinals voted overwhelmingly for Bergoglio on the final ballot. This conclave was further proof that the media doesn't choose the next pope, but it is God's decision. The next conclave to take a look at occurred in April of 2005, upon the death of Pope John Paul II. There are conflicting reports as to how the first few ballots went down. All conclaves are conducted in secret, and we must rely on second-hand information from cardinals that were present. One of the more credible accounts indicates that the cardinal with the third most votes on the first ballot was Camillo Ruini, who served as president of the Italian Episcopal Conference from 1991 to 2007 and as vicar general of the Diocese of Rome from 1991 to 2008. He was very active in the mass media and was one of the cardinals who most often appeared on Italian television, newspapers, and magazines. He was the strongest voice of the church against the spring 2005 referendum for the abolition of parts of Italy's laws on artificial insemination and joined the Italian Bishops' Conference in opposing the 2007 Italian Bill on Civil Unions. The cardinal who received the second most votes was Joseph Ratzinger, who we know eventually became Pope Benedict XVI. The top vote-getter on the first ballot was Carlo Maria Martini, the former Archbishop of Milan. He served in stark contrast to Pope John Paul II and often carried a progressive tone with his faith. Before his death in 2012, he had stated that the Church is 200 years behind the times. Pope Francis has often referenced Martini and described the Cardinal as a prophet of peace and a father in the church, not only for his diocese, but for countless people. As the ballots continued, it was both Martini and Ruini who started to lose support with Cardinal Ratzinger taking a strong lead. Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio actually ended up as the second place vote-getter on the final ballot. This set him up as a serious contender for the 2013 conclave in which he became Pope. The next conclave occurred in October of 1978, and is quite unique considering another conclave had just occurred the previous August. Pope John Paul I was selected in that August conclave, 
but he only served for 33 days before having a heart attack. After the first few ballots, it was clear that two candidates were emerging. The first was Cardinal Giuseppe Siri, the conservative Archbishop of Genoa. In March 1944, Siri was appointed Auxiliary Bishop of Genoa. During his tenure as an auxiliary, he was a member of the Italian resistance movement in World War II. He negotiated with the Nazi forces surrounding Genoa and met secretly with partisan leaders, eventually arranging a Nazi surrender that avoided further bombardment of the city. Pope Pius XII created him Cardinal Priest in the Consistory of January 1953. At the time of his elevation, he was the youngest member of the College of Cardinals. He became known as the Ministrone Cardinal for his relief work in soup kitchens. Siri was noted for his staunchly conservative views and maintained a strong relationship with traditionalist Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. However, Siri said, I would describe myself as an independent, a man who walks alone and is not a member of any group. The other strong contender on the early ballots was Cardinal Giovanni Benelli, the liberal Archbishop of Florence and a close associate of John Paul I. In 1967, Benelli was appointed to the Roman Curia as deputy of the Secretariat of State. As the actual Secretariat was too old to fulfill most of his duties, they fell to Benelli. He worked closely with his former master, now Pope Paul VI, and remained in this post for 10 years. Some referred to him as the Berlin Wall and the Vatican Kissinger in the Vatican for his aggressive and almost authoritarian tenure as deputy of the Secretariat of State, including having the more senior curialists channel business through him. As a consensus could not be reached between either candidate, a compromise was suggested. Cardinal Franz Koenig, the influential and widely respected Archbishop of Vienna, individually suggested to his fellow electors a candidate, the Polish Cardinal Karol Józef Wojtyła, whom Koenig knew and by whom he was highly impressed. On the eighth ballot on the third day, according to the Italian press, Cardinal Wojtyła received 99 votes from the 111 participating electors. He went on to become Pope John Paul II as a way to honor his late predecessor. He accepted his election with these words. With obedience in faith to Christ, my Lord, and with trust in the Mother of Christ and the Church, in spite of great difficulties, I accept.